Okay, so Tesla unveiled a robot last week. Well, maybe the presentation could have been a bit more impressive, you know, like actually showing a real robot instead of a prop and a weird dancer. But if Tesla can deliver what they showed, then this could be a real game changer. This robot might not only be very useful here on Earth, but yes, you guessed it, also on Mars. So how could this robot help make humanity multiplanetary? However, no week would be complete without at least a bit of Blue Origin drama. More reports are surfacing that many top engineers are leaving Blue Origin as the Moonlander fight escalates, with Bezos taking more and more aggressive and inappropriate measures just to stall Starship. Apparently many employees don't agree with Bezos' unfair strategy. And lastly, let's also talk a bit about Starlink and the importance of Starlink for our interplanetary future. There's a lot to talk about this time, so stay tuned. We all know that there are some potential synergies between Elon Musk's companies SpaceX, Tesla, Boring Company and Neuralink, especially in the light of our future in space. We for example speculated quite often about the use of boring machines on the Moon and Mars in order to dig underground tunnels for water ice harvesting, or for the mining of precious metals and other valuable resources. So there is a strong synergy possibility between the boring company and SpaceX. Or of course the use of Tesla solar cells and Tesla buffer batteries for energy generation and energy storage on the Moon or Mars. And of course a Moon or Mars rover version of the Cybertruck, that's pretty clear. So synergies also exist between Tesla and SpaceX. We even speculated about the possibility of using Neuralink VR on the long flights between Earth and Mars in order to help overcome the psychological burdens on these multi-month journeys. So there are definitely lots of possibilities how Elon's companies could work together in the future, especially in light of making humans multiplanetary. And now with the unveiling of a possible Tesla robot, an additional new possibility has emerged. Yeah, sure, the Tesla robot is not even in prototype stage yet. It's a vision as of now, something that has been added to the long list of Elon's other projects that he also wants to do. Many people complained that it wasn't a real robot that had been revealed. We get it. It's again one of those weird things where you don't know when it will come or in what form it will come, so of course it should be taken with a grain of salt. But hey, come on, Tesla made up for it by having a thin guy in a robot suit dancing a super weird and funny dance. I mean, that also has to mean something, right? In said presentation, the robot was touted as having a carrying capacity of 45 pounds, that is 20.41 kg for people who use units that actually make sense weighs only 57 kilograms, can run at 5 mph or 8 kph, and is powered by Tesla's full self-driving computer. It basically uses the hardware of a Tesla car, autopilot cameras installed in the head, and is being trained by Tesla's Dojo supercomputer. This powerful AI neural net will allow the robot to learn super fast, and hence hopefully be able to do all tasks that we humans don't like to do so much. Here on Earth, for example, boring or repetitive tasks such as cleaning the house or building stuff in a factory. And of course, it will also be powered by Tesla's own batteries. No word yet on when exactly it would become available, but Elon said that they'd want to show a working prototype sometime next year. But after the presentation, we couldn't stop wondering what other uses this robot could have except for the obvious ones mentioned in the presentation. And of course, Mars immediately came to our minds. Just imagine the first cargo starships being sent to Mars in 2024 with a dozen of these humanoid robots on board. What better way to prepare the first colony for the arrival of humans years later? These fully autonomous robots could unload the cargo from the starships, for example expandable habitat modules, drive Cybertruck rovers, deploy solar arrays, deploy batteries, so basically construct an entire Mars space. 
so that when humans arrive in the next or later launch windows, say realistically around 2030 plus minus, then the human settlers could already find a finished Mars base where they would immediately be able to live comfortably as opposed to having to build the base themselves upon arrival, which certainly wouldn't be too much fun. Thus, this AI-powered Tesla robot could be a real game changer for space exploration. Of course, the same applies for the moon. Imagine a few of these robots being already sent to the moon on the first NASA Artemis test landing missions with Starship. These robots could deploy all systems and already start building the power infrastructure and habitat modules for the arrival of the Artemis astronauts. It's certainly better than having artificial humans doing these dangerous tasks because you know they would mutiny probably and then flee to earth and do some unfriendly stuff and then they'd have to be retired by special police units you know that would be morally questionable so it's better to have the dangerous work done by tesla bots radiation will pose no problem to them they can just spend a lot of time outside of the habitat modules on the moon or mars and assemble stuff or explore some dangerous areas where you wouldn't want to go yourself. For example, we can imagine these robots being the first moon or Mars cave or lava tube explorers. They can already do a reconnaissance of the lava tube in order to ensure the utmost safety for humans. Pretty cool stuff we have to say. The possibilities for these robots are endless or having them deploy on Jupiter's moon Europa in a future mission, of course by Starship, together with an ice-melting submarine. They could help deploy the probe and maintain it and act as an AI intermediary where they could make decisions much much faster than humans because of the long communications time delay between Earth and Europa. The radiation on Europa is by the way insanely high because the moon is within Jupiter's radiation belts and hence the radiation dosage there is an insane 5.4 sieverts per day which is so high that one day of exposure for a human would kill him or her with a very high probability within a day. So having robots building radiation proof shelters on Europa is a very good idea before any human could ever think of setting foot there. We are sure there are countless other possibilities for these robots. Let us know in the comments section if you have any other cool ideas what these robots could help us with in the future. Not only in space, but also on Earth. So now from the Tesla robot back to our always fun topic of Blue Origin. In the last videos we talked in detail about the whole messed up Artemis human lander situation and how Jeff Bezos is blocking progress wherever he can so we won't talk in detail anymore about this stuff. But now reports are surfacing that lots of employees are leaving Blue Origin. Famously, a lead engineer from Blue Origin has left the company for SpaceX. Quite the slap in the face, especially since this lead engineer was working on the human lander for the Artemis program. And it now seems that he's not alone. Apparently 17 key leaders and senior engineers have left Blue Origin this summer, most of whom had been working on the human lander. Well, it seems the air is really out of the bag now for Blue Origin's Artemis moon lander. Most of the people leave for SpaceX and some for other space companies like Firefly Aerospace. On Glassdoor, Blue Origin doesn't exactly have shining reviews. Three stars with only 17% approving of the CEO. Compare that to SpaceX with 4.1 stars and 91% approval rate for Elon Musk. Frustration with executive management and a slow bureaucratic structure is often cited as reasons why work at Blue Origin doesn't seem to be super satisfying. Especially the slow bureaucratic structure is something we often criticize about Blue Origin. This is exactly the reason why the new Glenn rocket is still not flying and most likely will not be flying for quite a few more years. Jeff Bezos should just make Blue Origin his absolute top priority and pump massive amounts of money into the company. If he would pump over 100 billion into Blue Origin and just build his own moon colonization project, if he would speed up rocket development and make human moon landings his top priority, then this company could become very attractive for top talent 
and be a real competition for SpaceX. But as it is now, SpaceX is light years ahead and it's just the company where the action is. And lastly, a bit on Starlink. We haven't talked about it for quite a while. We must talk about it again because of its extreme importance for our multi-planetary future. This article here from half a year ago certainly didn't age well. So funny to see media fail time and time again to understand exponential growth. Idiots. User bases of disruptive technologies always grow exponentially, dear media. Look here, this simple logistics S function perfectly explains the growth of disruptive technologies. First an exponential rise and then a flattening after the saturation starts kicking in. And since half of the world population, so over 3.5 billion people, do not have internet access as of now, since they live in remote rural areas, there is a freaking large user base with strong demand for Starlink. We will see saturation for Starlink when billions of people will use it. Billions. So in this funny font article here, they said in February that Starlink will not generate a lot of income for SpaceX, because Starlink only had 10,000 customers back then. Now, half a year later, we're standing at 90,000 active customers, a ninefold increase in half a year, and 600,000 more pre-orders. Already now, with only around 1,700 Starlink satellites in orbit, the download and upload speed and latency is really quite impressive. There are many YouTube videos demonstrating well over 100 megabits per second of download in the middle of nowhere, and already 30 milliseconds of latency. And that is even now in the early stages. So just imagine where this is going. Hundreds of millions of people will be using Starlink still in this decade, which will create billions in revenue for SpaceX, contrary to what some FUD media articles would want to make you believe. Hence, by solving a big problem for humanity and connecting the other half of the human population to the internet, SpaceX will enable humanity to become multi-planetary, because those billions in revenue will be paying for the building of our future off-world colonies. So that's all I got for today, finally a non-Artemis human lander system focused episode. So then, until the next time, we wish you all the best, stay safe and on to the future!